How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode, episode number 12, moving into the 2023 off season. In the last one, the playoffs, we had a franchise record run as we went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. We ended up getting swept by the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Boston Bruins, but it was a great ride to get there nonetheless. We beat the Penguins, Elvis Merzlikens and the Penguins in five. We beat Le Canadien de Montréal in six and and then we got swept out by Boston, who won in six against Winnipeg. But it was a good time nonetheless. We saw some flashes of brilliance from guys like Patrick Laine, who finally showed up. 13 points in 15 games. We had one of our trade deadline acquisitions in Timo Meyer scoring 10 points in 15 games, although a negative seven. We had a fantastic performance from our free agent signing, Igor Shosturkin, who went 8-5-2 and two with really nice numbers. So it was a good, good postseason run we have to say it's a building block moving forward and we're pretty much running it back here in moving into year number four now getting into this episode you might be saying whoa data after the last few weeks of you know one episode every five six days this is two episodes in three days what's going on well with nhl 22 coming out in less than a month now it is coming fast i want to get as many episodes done as possible so we get as deep into this franchise mode as we could possibly get hopefully winning one or more stanley cups and doing a few more seasons at the very least so if you didn't have time to throw in your suggestions in the last one do not worry about it that's why watching asap is always best but we have a great team of assistant gms who can help out if you are a little busy and can't get those uh suggestions in before those sometimes two days before recording but you know, sometimes it goes five days. It's always different. That's unfortunately the way things go when I'm trying to balance work, school, and franchise mode. But nonetheless, here we are in the 2023 offseason beginning with the draft. First overall will absolutely be Connor Bedard, medium franchise. I Wow, look at those numbers. We gave him a, a boost in the um, roster update, uh, sorry, uh, editing before we started the franchise mode. It looks like that really helped him as he was pretty much consistently scoring uh, close to two points a game in the WHL. And like a goal a game pace here, not to mention 50 power play points in this most recent season. So I don't know, probably 83, 84 overall for him. Uh, the created or generated players after that, we have some medium elites, and then we move into the medium top four Ds and medium top six forwards. Our pick at 28 isn't really anything special, it looks like. So I'm either going to slightly trade up or just end up trading the pick altogether because there isn't a lot that's interesting. After that, after that uh, end of the first round, you have to get into the mid-ish of the second round. Neil DeFazio looks very interesting, so maybe I would trade the first for him to get the pick for him. I like that name. I like the uh, nationality from Switzerland. And, you know, I was considering, do we trade that pick maybe for a defensive defenseman to play on the third D pair? But that'll probably be answered in free agency. But before we get too far into this one, let's go into the comments. Patrick leaving a long one saying, well done on the season. GM data making history. Igor carried, but I think there needs to be a clear DFD upgrade over Kyle Wood. Boston was so solid because they, at least one, they had at least one mid-80s D-man on each pair. So even though Swayman isn't the highest overall, he has the great player types in front of him at all times. Defense should go Jones and Wharf on the first pair, Falk with Larson or a new D-man, and then DeHaan with Larson or a new D-man. So pretty much saying Adam Larson as a defensive defenseman will continue on the second pair or transition to third pair, depending on what kind of defensive defenseman we could pick up. Foodie did even better than expected, but Meyer needs to be gone. That middle six was touch and go, probably will be the hardest of all to get right with the coach we have going into the next season. But if we get it right, Foodie plus the elite playmaker in Felipe Sanderson could be mid-80s by the playoffs, which would be huge. For the draft, I would only trade up by getting rid of those who we know won't be on the team. Otherwise, I would suggest we use it to get something for a run, but I think we also need to get as many later round high potential players, obviously. Now way more excited going to next season than we were going into this season. Much more optimism, but it's not time to keep making the playoffs. No off years. Otherwise, we may have to think about blowing it up. And then in a follow-up comment, Patrick also said, it would be probably better if we let Wood and Gavrikov both walk since they want a lot of money. Keep Dahan if the price is right, but maybe we should look to upgrade for an 83 plus aging D-man. Keep Dahan for the, keeping him for the power play would be good, but if we don't, that's okay. And we'll see how things kind of shape out, especially when it comes to free agency. Great comment here coming from Scott saying, Reinhardt for captain. He's campaigning for him. The only one showing some fight when we are down 5 nothing, 
in a game four on the verge of getting swept. And he's the only one who was putting the puck in the back of the net. He was the only one who still had some fight in him. So you know what? That is a good case for making him captain over Boone Jenner when ben Boone Jenner leaves, question mark. But just to say, at least the A on his jersey is very well deserved right now. Vinny says we should package everyone that we think is going to be leaving, plus our first to trade up a little bit for the top six prospects in the late 10s to early 20s. They look interesting. Again, that'll depend on if there's teams who want to trade their picks, plus how much value players like Timo Meyer have if we're going to be moving them away. And uh, Scott, again, I was almost yelling at my screen when you skipped over Clutterbuck's retirement. I, I apologize again for skipping over Cal Clutterbuck. We didn't see him in the retirement screen, but he is now a scout. That's how we knew that he retired. It was a nice final season for him, wishing him the best into his retirement and wrapping up here with pat who says we should qualify and re-sign wood a week into free agency that makes the price tag go down a little bit probably around two million the planned top nine that we had at the end of last video sounded good just keep the eyes peeled for bargain rfas and cheap grinders but the team performed so well I would run most of it back, and I 100% agree with that. My apologies to Hef. When I was doing the recording, I didn't scroll far enough up into the Discord server, so I didn't get to his comment. But now that I'm in post-editing here, shame about the result, but it's hard to be too upset about a run to the conference finals. I don't think we need to do too much to our team here. Gavrikov can probably be dealt as he was pretty trash, but the rest of the team was sound. I think now is the time to start focusing on player types in the draft. Namely, going after grinders because our current grinders are on the verge of retiring and it's time to start replenishing the stock. Starting by weight and then going by pony minutes is the best way to find them from what I've found. Go and get those undrafted free agents as always. Pro tip, easier to find if you filter by two-way players in the free agency screen. So thank you very much for those tips, Hef. So moving into the draft here, I went through the player search. I was looking at some defensive defensemen who may be available to us, and unfortunately, there are not many. The best one, according to trade value and the players on the block, would be Brendan Dillon. There are some other players, but the value is just too high. I don't want to trade the first round pick and more picks just for a guy to play second, third pair D defensive defenseman. I'd rather just get someone straight up in free agency. So we don't have much to say headed into this draft. We'll see if there's anyone who wants to trade their picks. The fourth and fifth picks are up for grabs, but the problem with that is that we do not have the trade value. If we wanted to make a trade for a top four or five pick, we'd be having to move a roster player. Looking at our forwards now and sorting by overall, remember the top nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remove Timo Meyer. That brings in, no, sorry, Felino's not here either. Remove Boone, sorry, excuse me, remove Timo Meyer and Nick Felino. That puts Felipe Sanderson in the top nine. The fourth line, we still have Sveshnikov, Ernie, what's happening with them? We got Shaw and Delorier. Still a lot of high 70s to boot there. So if we wanted to move someone like, let's say, I don't know, Victor Olafsson to get the fifth overall pick with our draft pick, yeah, we could probably do that, but now we have a hole in the top nine. We have to trade someone who we, we're trading someone who we just signed in free agency to go and get a draft pick, and then there's a hole in the spot he just filled, so we signed someone free agency to fill the spot of the free agent signing. It's just, it's just going in circles. I don't think it makes much sense. So trading for the fourth, fifth overall pick won't really be an option for us, I don't think. What I will be doing is trading the players that we know aren't coming back on this team. Uh, we don't have the money or the placement for them, and that includes Timo Meyer and Nick Felino, like I just said. So I don't anticipate much value being found for these players, but again, starting by overall, if anybody wants both of them, we'll see if we can do a little package deal to get a little bit more value. But... Uh, okay, we got something here. We got a both of them for a seventh. Uh, yikes, both for a seventh. That's yikes. Can I just... What is just Timo Meyer getting me then? Duncan, Keith, and Drake Kajula. Seventh, seven. Okay, I'll, I'll trade them individually for sevenths then. Could get Dmitry Orlov and Connor Sheary, but I'm going to take my chances in free agency for that. Two sevenths from the Vancouver Canucks. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. Move them to the Western Conference. Timo Meyer, I wish you all the best. You can play with Jack Roslevic, and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you for what you did here in our postseason run. Nick Foligno, the captain, we're moving him away as well. Let's get a pick in this draft, I suppose. 213. Yeah, 213 from the San Jose Sharks. We're trading him back to the team that we got him from. So maybe they want to re sign him. They just didn't want to, you know, they wanted to dump him to a team that wanted to go on a run. Adam Ernie, I saw he wants like $2 million to re-sign, so I'm going to dump him as well. 
Who else has a seven? We could get Gustav Nyquist. Uh, I have enough sevens in this draft now, getting that last one. So let's move him to, I don't know, the New York Rangers, fine. Just a seventh round pick for him. I don't think there's anyone else. I don't think so. I'll probably be resigning most of these guys or just letting them walk because they have too little value. And just Gavrikov as well, actually. Forgot about Gavrikov. The LA Kings are about to make their first pick and get uh, Connor Bedard. I'm really curious to see what his overall is. Gavrikov could get a 70. Maybe even Sidik Paquette because he's a grinder. I might go after Sidik Paquette. But let's see the LA Kings. Uh, wow! What? 85 overall? I didn't make Connor Bedard an 85, but looks like he grew. Oh my goodness, it's the puck skills, that's why. 99 discipline and 5-star puck skills. The shooting, okay, everything else is pretty normal. He's a fast skater and has fantastic puck skills. That makes sense. Connor Bedard, 85 overall, medium franchise to the LA Kings. Well, congrats to LA for getting him. Defenseman now. I like Vladislav Gavrikov very much, but again, top 6 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's even with Jeremy Roy and Peak being left out. So Gavrikov, he has to go... Dahan and Wood, we still not sure what's going to happen with them, but we'll try to get them signed, I suppose. I like Kukan a lot as well, but again, I'll probably just trade both of these guys. I like Gavrikov and Kukan both very much. They were our third pair, I think, when we first started this off, or they were both in the NHL at the very least. And now we have to lose both of them because we just have too many players, I guess, vying for that slot. Cedric Paquette is a grinder. He's a centerman, so you know what? I may as well take him. If he doesn't fit the lines, we can always just trade him away. So thank you to the New York Islanders for that. Just swapping players' rights. Probably could have gotten a seventh out of that as well, but I won't be too greedy. And then, yeah, I won't trade anybody else except for Kukan, like I said. Not sure what kind of value he'd be getting. Probably a seventh as well. No, no trades found. Okay, so that's all the trading that I have to do. Pick up some draft picks. Uh, if you want to see the current draft pick situation like I do, we have our first this year as well as 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 3, 4, 7th. Next year we have a 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 2 6th, 1, 2, 3, 4 7th. So we can still move a lot of those picks. We could trade 2 7th to get a 6th in this draft, etc. So good to have those options. New York Islanders, we just traded Gavrikov to. They draft Astles, 81 overall, medium elite sniper, 5 star shooting. Good stuff from him. Uh, and... I'll probably, let's, yeah, I'm going to jump ahead here. Let me sim to a pick. No one wants to trade their pick before 23, eh? Let me stick to, let me sim to pick 20 or so, and we'll pick up from there. All right, I pick number 20 now. Let's see what happened in the rest of the first round. Uh, Zabanaji, I mean, defensive defenseman. Lume, 81 overall, medium lead sniper centerman. Great for a fourth overall pick. He could probably be second or third most here, so I guess the Coyotes just need a defenseman. Rogers, 2 2, all medium elite there. Rogers with medium top 4D. Top 4Ds, top 6 forwards. Now we're getting into those. Medium elite stone to the flames. Medium elite power forward center to the lightning. Top 6 forwards, top 4D. So no one, still no one wants to trade their pick. It would have been nice to be able to get these picks back here, those medium elites, but if the team doesn't want to trade the pick, it's not going to happen. I don't have the value to make it happen either. So medium top six sniper center to the uh, Preds, medium top four defensive defenseman to the Blues with the Hawks pick coming up and then one after that. So probably any three of these top six forwards could be targets for us. Miko Nurmanen, Juha Allen, and Malachi Hedekin. Two-way forward and possibly power forward, two-way forward. A medium top six forward who's three years away is probably the same as any of those last guys, mid-60s. I'm not sure if I want to trade up for that. I'd rather probably just trade down and go get the guy I was looking at there, DeFazio, or even Ragnarsson, Sven Ragnarsson, ranked 42nd here. Looks very interesting. Uh, similar to Marion Gabrick, three years away. DeFazio, similar to Phil Castle, three years away. Possibly medium elite. This guy's guaranteed medium top six. Either of them would be great at 40 or 41. So if all the way over here is 31, you got 32, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 11, I'd probably have to trade for the Hurricanes pick here. Round two, pick eight would be what I got to do. And I think that's kind of what I'm sold on here. I don't think trading down is going to be anything. I'm, I'm trading up. So moving 28 in exchange for 39. Um, they don't want the pick, so I probably can't squeeze too much more out of it, unfortunately. 
Okay, it's got a fifth and a seventh uh, trade accepted. Yeah, that's a pretty solid enough deal for me. That's usually what the going price tag is. In the real world, you'd get like a third, but fifth and a seventh is all I could squeeze out there from the Hurricanes. So we have lots of picks. If we don't need them later on, we will just dump them. But at the moment, I am content with that. I probably passed on a medium top six D or something. So let's see who went at pick number 28. Uh, there he is, medium top six D. There you go, 61 overall, Jalen Bancroft. Congratulations to the Hurricanes. No one else interesting, yikes. Round two, top nines, top six Ds, yeah, dangerous. Pavelka, Dadnov, okay. So round two, pick nine, this, excuse me, pick number eight. We are definitely gonna be taking Defazio or Ragnarsson. Both are 17 years of age, both are wingers. Defazio is six foot, Ragnarsson five foot 10. Not much of a difference between these guys. Defazio, three assists in 36 games, A minus competition. Ragnarsson, one goal in 38 games. 42 pounding minutes though, which maybe is concerning a bit. Uh, looking according to the stats here, physical and defense are low, but A plus shooting. Defazio, I don't know enough about him to know as much because he's not as uncovered, but I really like the three bars melee potential. I think at the very least, he has to be medium top six. So I'm gonna take the risk on him. From HC Lugano, of course, the Italian, Swiss, probably has dual citizenship with Italy. Neil DeFazio, welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets. He is medium top six, we'll take it, very nice. 64 overall, and he has normal stats, good. So he should grow nicely as a normal prospect in our system. And I'm happy getting him at round two pick eight because he would have been the guy that you take probably, he was just as good as these guys in the middle of round number one like uh, medium top six sniper here or pick, very similar, two less attributes on the shooting, 81 instead of 83. Pretty similar aside from that. Our next pick is at pick number 59. So would there be anyone between 40 and 59 that we want to reach for? Ragnarsson, still interesting. Unila, medium top four D, but low top six forward there. Uh, there probably isn't anyone before 59. Hector Veshi, low top six forward. But I could probably go for defense, or it'd be Byron or uh, Rene Richard. So you know, I'm gonna yeah, I'll just go with a pick here, pick number 59. Let's see who's available for us. Uh, the Kings want to give me a third and a sixth next season for pick 59. No chance. Uh, Veshi was a low top six forward. Pitt and medium starter, 64 overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Medium bottom six forward goes in the second round. Brutal, brutal. So now we have the selection of either of those prospects. Rene Richard from the Quebec Ramparts of the QMJHL. 18 years of age, six foot four, defensive D-man, big boy, that's for sure. Three years away, that's interesting. Or Miles Byron from, is that Denmark or is it, um, I think it's Denmark, correct me if I'm wrong. He's also three years away. Uh, pretty normal stats from him. We just took a sniper, so you know what? Let's go for the defense in the system. We have a lot of defensemen, but not a lot of defensive prospects. So René Richard, bienvenue à l'équipe, and he is low top 4D, 63 overall, defensive defenseman. Big boy, he is 6 for 4 like we said, and normal stats all around, 78 shot blocking. Looking forward to seeing his growth. I'm okay with that pick. Next is at pick 89. Do we have anyone between 60 and 89 that we really want to go for in terms of guys we have uncovered? It was a pretty good year for scouting. Unfortunately, a lot of guys we have fully scouted aren't super interesting. Ned Flood, three bars low elite. Two bar medium elite here, Jace Corvo, son of Joe Corvo. Is he an offensive defenseman? Mm, that's a um, weakness is offensive cap uh, consistency. Not sold on two bar medium elite as much at that high of a pick. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Oh my goodness, medium elite grinder. There it is. Elijah Petrovic. Yes. Okay, let's sim to our next pick. Elijah Petrovic. That's going to be nice. We need to start thinking about player types, especially that we're going with the um, grinder fourth line. I think we'll probably even just uh, trade the pick a little bit more down because this guy's not going for a while. We could probably get, because this is 89, he's not going until 96. So every little bit matters. I'm going to trade it for the Bruins pick at 31 at uh, the end of this round, 93rd overall. Actually, you know what? Let me go for the, for the fourth round from the Blackhawks because that'll have even less value at 94. So I'll give you 89 for 94, and you give me uh, an additional seventh round pick in next year's draft because I'm going to be stockpiling those so I can make deals whenever I see players that I want. 
they draft a low top nine playmaker. We go to pick number 94 and we get our medium elite grinder, Elijah Petrovic. Uh, eight pounding minutes, no points in 19 games played, e-skating, five years away, probably a massive project. Even if he doesn't make the league, that's still medium league potential and we could still use that as a trading piece even if he never plays for us. So it's a win-win uh, either way and he is 49 overall, my goodness. Medium Elite 49 overall. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. I doubt he ever makes the team, but he's here with that Medium Elite potential. Oh. Next pick is at 121. Anyone between 95 and 121 that we want to take a uh, little flyer on? Cristiano Corbin, four years away, possibly. Yeah, power. I'll probably take Corbin. I mean, that's where we can use some picks to trade up. I don't see anybody else before that pick. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Let's use some picks to get Corbin. He is, we're at 95 and he's ranked where? 102. So let's move ahead like five picks here. One, two, three, four, five, something like that with the Red Wings. I'll give you 128 and then I'll throw in what I got here. 215 and 213. A fifth and two sevens for a fourth. There we go. Trade accepted. Thank you very much. Sim to pick number 99. We are wheeling and dealing. And we'll take Cristiano Corbin from the US development system. Six foot five. Definitely has to be a power forward, right? Yeah, that's guaranteed. And he's only medium top nine, but 60 overall. And it's good to get these guys in the system. We need to replenish the system. We are lacking on prospects a little bit. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead to pick 121 now. 121. Some low bottom six guys going there. Yikes. Uh, do we want to start reaching on guys? Not a ton of interesting pieces here. Low Elite, Weston Haley, Joshua ben Bengoa, Brian Foligno. Uh, two bar medium elite. Low Elite guaranteed here, Ken Snyder. We'll take him with our next pick. But I think I'll just dump this pick. I'm not down to really trade it. So I'll trade this fourth for a fourth next season from the Coyotes. What do you say to that? Trade rejected, sweetened just a touch. Yeah, it's true because it's going to be a high fourth. So, do I have a, how many sevens do I have next season? You have a bunch of sevens. So, you can take, uh, why not just take Vegas' seventh, and I'll give you that for your fourth next season. Thank you very much. With that pick, they take, well, medium elite. Oh, I'm not drafting any goalies because we have enough in the system, but that hurts. That's the pick we traded them. At least he's in the Western Conference. Andre Bobkov going to the Coyotes. Oh, I wasn't going to draft a goalie either way, like I just said, but... The Coyotes better be happy with that. Ken Snyder from Poland. He is playing in the SHL, has a lot of things to work on, but low elite nonetheless. Definitely got to draft him. And he is 54 overall, two-way D, low elite, with the stats looking like that. Between 154 and 167, anybody we want to go for? A couple of low elites, a couple of low top sixes, medium starter. Low elite. Don't know a lot about these guys, unfortunately, as we get to the bottom. If I just sort by potential at this point, uh, yeah, two bars, medium elite is the best we're getting. For low elite, it's also two bars. And for medium top six, it's two bars. The guaranteed is 190. Sven Haglin. Might as well take him. Low top six um, with our next pick at, was it 167? Yeah, we'll take him at 190. There we go. Power forward playing in the SHO, the Vaxio, Vaxio Lakers. Uh, foot speed is a big issue, apparently. Let's see, he's 206 pounds, low top six forward, 52 overall, with a one star for the skating category. Yeah, a lot of projects we're drafting. We're drafting a lot of trade value today. Not a lot of big pieces necessarily, but a lot of trade value. Low elite, how about this guy? Christopher Hargrave, two bar low elite from France. Let's just go for it, for the nationality. Hargrave from the beautiful... Low top 6D, defensive defenseman, 56 overall. Le Francais, come on. 190, just a couple picks later. This will probably be the last picks. I don't, I'm not seeing anybody that I'm really interested in anymore. There are goalies with two bar medium lead potential, but I'm not really looking at taking goalies. If I take them, I guess they're projects. So you know what? Yeah, they won't clog up the system right now because they're really projects. They won't be 60 overall guys. Marcus Gogolev, he is medium elite. Nice, 52 overall. We'll take him for the trade value. Pick 198. I'm not sure if I'll do another one. Sorting just by skaters. There's some one bar medium elite guys, two bar medium top six. I'll go for Boris Tikhonov. 
and then I will trade the picks from there. Medium bottom six. Yeah, let's uh, trade those last picks, if any. Oh, no, that was the last one. Wonderful. So now we have a first, a second, a third, two fourths, a fifth, two sixths, and one, two, three, four fourths. Pretty reasonable now. A bit more reasonable than before. So that was our last pick. At least he was a grinder. And that is the end of the draft. Pretty solid draft. A good enough draft as we... Moved down for Defazio, I like that a lot. René Richard, the medium elite grinder in Elijah Petrovic, and then some good potential down the line there. I'm just glad we got a lot of prospects in the system because there weren't too many before today. Now we have sim to the re-sign phase. We have René Pouliot and Frédéric Haynes, who are both uh, on ex who have ex their deals expired on the NHL coaching staff. So René Pouliot's an A-plus coach. He's not going to want to sign on as an associate again. One scout had a contract expire. We have to figure out if we're going to be keeping our head coach or not because that's a big thing. You know, he's what, like B minus rated. If there's someone better, uh, I might think about it. Even though he won two Jack Adams in three years, we might have to think about it because if he's still going to be at B minus rating and never go up from there, it's three years now. I don't think he's gone up from B, uh, B minus. I think he's always been there. Rene Pouliot, we could make him our head coach at an A-plus with all those A-pluses, but he doesn't have the same line fit for the team. So I definitely have to let him walk at the very least because he won't re-sign unless he's being signed as the head coach. So I guess I'll just fire him. Yeah, but now his line preferences are going to change now he's gone to free agency, so maybe he does become a good coach. That's a glitch here in NHL 21. Once the coach leaves the team and goes back into the free agency coaching staff pool, all their line preferences change. Frederick Haynes, we could keep him. A-plus for the special teams and all that. He, yeah, why not? If he wants to come back as the uh, assistant coach? Yeah, he could be the assistant coach, I guess. He wants to be the head coach, uh, so no chance. He wants 1.4. No, he's not going to sign this. I'll try. I'll try to give him, you know, I'll give him, nah, whatever, money's no object. I'll give him five years, 1. Point whatever, 1.7. And uh, if he wants it, he'll take it. If not, uh, I doubt he gets signed as a NHL head coach. So now we can move into the contract phase here as we have $11.558 million to play with. All expiring. Guys like Sveshnikov, I'm going to send him an offer because uh, I think it's pretty cheap. He wants 1.1. He could be a, a 13th forward for us. Kyle Wood, he wants 2.7. Oh, he's a UFA. I can't even qualify him. So probably let him walk and see what happens in free agency. Calvin DeHaan is someone I'd really like to keep because he gives the plus three to the second power play unit and all that. So I'll see what I can do with him. Schlappick, I'll probably keep him. Kuken, uh, he wants to extend, so maybe. And most of these guys I'll keep. Cedric Paquette could be on the fourth grinder line there. He wants a cheap deal. And the only guys I'll probably let go for sure. Uh, we'll sign these two prospects. Uh, Bernie, I'll let him walk. Dolan, I'll probably let him walk. Durapost will get him signed up. McKinnis, we got to keep him or else Al's not going to be too happy. Harrington will let him walk. And I don't know, we'll, we'll go from there. Goaltending here, uh, Rodrigue and Tarasov, I'll re-sign them. Berdain, I'll probably qualify and trade for a pick because he's good, but we just don't have room for him. And I'll get all that done right now. Okay, let's advance a day now and see what everybody has to say after I sent out a boatload of offers. Easy decision from Delorier, yes from Paquette. Dahan wants free agency, but I lowballed him a little bit. I gave him 2.55. Letnin, Kukan, Stenland all say yes. Sveshnikov says free agency. Rodrigue, Korshkov, Clendenning, McKinnis, Fix Wolanski, Dahlin, who I ended up getting because I liked his numbers. McDermott, Burray, Durapos all signing back on. Lovely to see that. So Kyle Wood, I'm gonna let him, I'm just gonna release him straight up probably. But we have the money. It's just, it's not really the money in terms of we can't keep him long term. It's just, I don't like paying people what they're not worth. I don't wanna pay him like one year, 2.5, 2.65, whatever. If he's gonna be a seventh defenseman, I'd rather be paying him closer to the 2 million range. So it's kind of more on principle than anything. Uh, Schlappik and Durgar Shinsev are both qualified because they're asking for too much money. Dahan, I will send him. I sent him one year, 2.55. Now I'll try one year, 2.75. Oh, he will be a full-time player, so I don't mind paying him a bit more. Sveshnikov would be a 13th forward. I offered him 1.1. Let me offer him 1.2. He's lucky this is a good season, but I'm not going to go much higher than that. Goalies, both of them are qualified, especially Tarasov. He wants 1.2 like one even though he's playing in the uh, ahl uh haynes is not going to sign on so goodbye easy decision from dahan nice get him back 
and Sveshnikov still says he wants free agency, so I will let him walk. We got him as a free agent. We let him go back to free agency now. He ended up only playing how many games in the NHL for us? Three games, zero points, negative one. Two seasons in Cleveland, decent numbers, especially in this last season, 35 and 43. But now we will let him walk because there's just no room for him in that top nine. And he would, I don't know, I think that it's just going to be more hard feelings than, than anything. So 9.758 is the money that we have left. Kyle Wood, I will offer you a contract, but letting him walk is definitely an option. I'm going to give him the uh, 85%, so 2.65, 85%, 2.252, 2.2. .2, so 2. 275 for one year if he doesn't take that then i'll just let him walk and we'll revisit later on and he rejects see you later in free agency release kyle wood everyone else is qualified rfas unsigned we'll let them all sit there and keep growing very nice the coach who didn't want to resign good let him go and we're ready to see the action on july 1st Easy decision. Oh, and Bardain resigned. That's right, because we're going to just trade him. We qualified him. He signed on early. Haynes is into the free agency pool, and here we are on July 1st. So before I get into free agency and all that stuff, I will go through the scouts and sign all of the new and better ones, which I always do on July 1st. Looking at the NHL head coaches available as well, sorting by overall. Uh, it's hard to really know who fits where because you don't see the full fit at this point in time. 64% uh, from Cameron Lorenz, A-, minus, loves Falk, Foodie, Jenner. This could be interesting. The thing is, Line A had a, has a full fit with Pouliot. We're in a Pouliot. I mean, uh, Pedro Prust, what am I saying? Uh, Cameron Lawrence doesn't have a good record all time, but he does have the A for the offense and A- minus for the defense. So he is tempting to go and get A minus. He's a forwards coach. Prost at the moment with his line fit, it is a 67 because of how much he loves line A. He likes Hyman a lot as well. I, th I think we probably keep Prost. We do need better associate and assistant coaches. So I'll work on that behind the scenes. I don't need to show you too much of that. I'll just show you the results of how it goes. Let me go to the staff screen, uh, sorry, the scouting screen to hire the new scout. So give me a minute for that. That's all done. Five new scouts are on the way. They're on the plane now and bought the ticket. Everyone's going to be happy. Big reception waiting for them. Let's head into free agency. Excited to see who is available. Oh my goodness. David Pasternak right away is the crown jewel. Casey Middlestad, Jonathan Taze, Max Pacioretty, Mason Appleton, 87 overall. What? Miller, Burakovsky, Monaghan, Malkin, Dumba, Dadnov, and the list goes on. Timo Meyer ended up going to free agency from the Canucks. He did not get re-signed. Michael Oliver in free agency, but restricted, correct? Yes. Let's just look at the UFAs who are available at the moment. RFAs get more interesting as the uh, free agency goes on into the summer. But UFAs, so many great forwards that are interesting to me, but I just don't think any of them make sense because the top nine is full on this team unless we make a trade and i don't see that being a possibility really after the season we just had we're going to mostly run it back any changes we need to be that need to be made will be made during the season when we find out what they are that being said i will quickly just look at sort by potential as always see who's out here young players with potential 24 year old yeah yoni ikonen possibility 72 overall any younger guys Watkins low top 60 I'll probably sign him let him grow in the system see if he ever becomes anything that's pretty much it here not a lot of good potential in the free agency not too much here so no that'll be the only prospect that we do sign always looking for those diamonds in the rough undrafted Weston Watkins we'll get him signed up to a two-way deal see if he ever ends up growing and becoming something for us as we've seen in the past and now just sorting by defensemen so sorting by overall and defensemen let's see who we could actually be going after because that's where we want to splash some of that 9.7 million dollars so Dumba, Letty, Clefbaum, Severson, Uyghur, Shattenkirk, Ghost, Ryan Graves, there's a name, Josh Mahura, there's a name, ah, he's a two-way D, I thought I was defensive, Justin Hall, there's a defensive defenseman, so the first defensive defenseman who pops up, who pop up are Graves, Hall, and then Brian Dumoulin, all very good candidates, Hamannick, now we can start getting a, two, a bit too low in overall, so I think it is between Graves, Hall, and Dumoulin, all with top four D potential. Graves is the youngest. Four goals, nine assists last season with a plus four on Colorado. Plus minus hasn't been the greatest. 86, 87, 88 in those defensive categories. Remember that, 86, 87, 88. Hall, 88, 86, 88. 
and Dumoulin, 87, 88, 87. So it comes back to the numbers now. Dumoulin was a plus one last year, plus 11, five. Looking at his simulation numbers is what I'm just most interested in. And Hall on Toronto, 50 penalty minutes. Uh, and a plus 12, though, with 15 points. A bit more offensive, perhaps. 81 offensive awareness. 70 discipline is a bit of a killer. Now we look at the pro scout. He says deep pairing two for Hall is potentially there. All deep pairings for Dumoulin and Graves. Maybe deep pairing three. You know the least about Graves. So the Graves Graves is probably the most... Uh, and he's the cheapest, unless we go with Dumoulin. I, I've always heard good things about how Brian Dumoulin simulates... He has a lot of veteran poise as well, which is something we need on this team. I think Dumoulin is the guy, even though Graves in the real, wood, real world would be the guy. 82 overall in this world at the age of 28 hasn't done as much, and his numbers are a bit lower when it comes to the defensive categories. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to sign Brian Dumoulin. Plus, no one else is interested at the moment, so maybe it'll be a bit cheaper. Uh, oh, especially if we go for one year. So I'll still offer him, instead of two years, 3.3. Oh, I can go even three years. Two years, 3.3 is where he wants the most. But if I give him three years, bank on him being a piece on this team moving forward, I can get him for way cheaper till the age of 34. We end up, we could just trade him later on as well. So three years, 2.850. And he could even be moving and slotting between the second and third pair, depending what the fit is between him, Larson, and Dahan. So three years, 2.8 million for Dahan, uh, for Dumoulin, probably makes the most sense. Hall would be wanting, yeah, we could go cheaper, a little bit cheaper at $3 million for him. And Graves, we could go a little bit cheaper, but Anaheim's in the mix too, so we'd be competing against them. But again, I guess it just comes down to those defensive numbers. Dumoulin, I like the shot blocking, the stick checking, the awareness. Uh, let's do it. But I just keep thinking to myself that if there's someone out there who's willing to give Dumoulin two years, 3.3, I'm not sure if he'll take the three years of 2.8. That's what I'm risking here by offering him three years. I'm not sure how the computer is going to play it. So let me try. I don't know. 2.8 might be too low. If I just go three years, three million is a bit expensive, though. Three years, 2.950. Oh, that extra 50K will make me feel a bit better about myself. And we'll go from there. Uh, Want to try and trade away Bardin. Let me find a team that needs a goalie. The Predators have only three goalies in their entire system and like no one in their AHL system. So that's a prime candidate to trade better day two. Can I get a sixth round pick from Nashville for him? The value of what you're asking is hugely inflated. Yeah. How about a seventh? Let me, let me guess. I'm not in the right city, let alone ballpark. Her seventh round pick. Oh, your pro scouts assessment is hugely inflated. That and our and you should take a look at our trade block. We don't need goalies. We have only three in our system and a 57 overall starting in the minors. And well, we want forwards and defense. So take a better look at our pro scouts block before you send us an offer like that. That disgusts me ever again. Okay, David Poyle, pump the brakes. Come on. What a sick joke. All the scouts sign on. That's fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. Weston Watkins, welcome to the team. Dumoulin, ah, thank you very much. I was getting a bit nervous there. Extremely happy to accept your offer. Cash offer, most generous. Really was quite easy to make up my mind about your offer. Hey, maybe it was a bit of an overpayment, but got to guarantee that you get these guys. Brian Dumoulin, welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets, my friend. He's going to be a good veteran presence for us. Let me go to like... Uh, the 10th of July or something, and then we'll reevaluate what's up with Kyle Wood. If he's still there, we'll try and sign him. If not, I'll probably just have uh, Andrew Peak be our seventh defenseman, so not a big deal. I gotta take those guys off the blocks. I'm getting crazy offers. Who's still out here? Taze Pavelski wants seven million as an 81 overall. Yeah. Uh, this guy Jones, uh, RFA. Look at this guy. What's his name? Zach Jones, 84 overall offensive defenseman, currently an RFA. How many games in the NHL has he played? Oh, 88 games, 9 points though. 80, 9 points in 80 games in his first rookie season. But now he's an 84 overall. That would be interesting. But RFA at the moment. Going to look for Kyle Wood, the man, the myth, the legend. He currently wants 2.2 million. So gone down a little bit. Let me try to bring him back a little further down to earth. We'll go one year at 1.750. And we'll see if he wants that to be our 7th defenseman. Pretty much playing, just paying him because of he, him being the legend that he is. 
And if he is wise, he will take the money and try to get another run at a Stanley Cup here. And there we go. I believe this signing will be good for myself and the franchise. Extremely happy to accept the qualifying offer as Yarkin Shinsev. Fantastic. So now we can sim to next season. But as always, before we can go, we need... I like Columbus are happy to announce they have just signed Kyle Wood to a one-year deal. Hashtag not bad. Hashtag not bad at all. Thank you, hockey analyst. So what we want to do is, as always, we put the number rent. We go to the number randomizer between one and one hundred, so as to decide what the draft class quality and generated prospect quality will be moving into next season. If it's a number between zero and twenty, we go low. If it's twenty to eighty, we go medium, and if it's eighty to one hundred, we go high for both of these generated things. So I have the computer right next to me. I'm gonna hit it once. I'm gonna throw a screen grab on the screen and that number, just that one randomization is what we go for each uh, of these two values. So for draft class quality, moving into year number four, we will have a 61. So that means medium for draft class quality. And for draft class quality, we will have medium as well as we get a 65. So always it's been medium 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 the entire time we've been doing this i do enjoy being able to do the randomizer but you know it does often because the odds are there just keep it medium medium which is the average but one of these days we will get an exceptionally weak or exceptionally strong class but the ea generated prospects do that anyways so it's not a big deal and you have guys like bedard 85 overall first pick and then you got Astles, who went 81 overall medium sniper. It was a good class this year, despite us keeping it at medium, medium. So let's start simulating to next season now. Let's take all these guys off the block, and we'll see if anything interesting comes our way. But if not, we will get to Anschlappic resigns. Great. And Tarasov as well. Fantastic. We will get to the beginning of year number four. And here we are now at the beginning of year number four. Felipe Sanderson, 86 overall. Oh my goodness. Okay, so give me a second here. I'm going to fix up the lines, how I think they should be looking, do the right call-ups, the send-downs to the minors, all that stuff, who I would like to have here for an audition in the preseason, and then we'll get a good look at our lineup moving into the preseason, which will be at the beginning of next episode. So here's a better idea of the lineup, and man, we have a lot of questions moving into next season. First line can stay the same as always with line A, Reinhardt, and Bjorkstrand. Second line, Olafsson, Foodie, and Sanderson. Sanderson, he has to play in the top six now, listed as a second line forward. Third line, Hyman, Jenner, and Texier. Fourth line being Delorier, Paquette, and Shaw. Not great overalls, that's the thing. Before these guys were 78, 79, even 80 with Shaw. With a plus three, now they go 81, 81, and 80. Do I want to run the, the grinder fourth line, or do I want to get Jacob Perrault in the lineup, who's now a 79 overall? Do I want to even possibly get Philip Schlappick in the lineup, who is an 80 overall? He could be my fourth line center. Do I want to get Kevin Stenlin, who's a 79? Do I want to get Zach Seneshin, who's a 79? Do I want to get them in the lineup over the current grinder fourth line? Maybe Shaw becomes my 13th forward, Paquette and Deloria get traded away, and I bring those guys up to be the fourth line. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Defensively, Brian Dumoulin has the exact same fit as Adam Larson, so they can swap between the first, sorry, the second and third pair. Worf Rojenko has grown up to a 90 overall, the Belarusian looking great, the Belarusian Klingon that is. Larson and Falk still with their same overalls, Dahan at an 81. I didn't touch the special teams yet. Shesterkin up to an 87, backed up by 84 overall, Jonas Korpi Salo. In the AHL, like I said, there are a lot of questions there. Uh, even defensively, as Peak is a 79, Dargachinsev, he's coming up there at a 77, Rodrigo and Tarasov, both 78 overall, they'll be pushing for the backup role next season. And then defensively, for the scratches, both Jeremy Roy and Kyle Wood are 81 overall. Roy, I was not expecting that from him, he's an 81 now, so maybe we trade away Calvin Dehan. Uh, Jeremy Roy takes his spot there, and then um, Kyle Wood becomes the seventh D-man, because we can't have so many of these, uh, I don't know, of these same player roles just sitting around here, you know? Does get the plus one on the third pair, and he fits even better on that first pair. He gave a plus five with Wharf. Do I want to try and get Roy to grow before his days are numbered as a top four D-man? That's kind of what I'm thinking. So the more I talk through it here, I think Wood's the seventh D-man, Dahan gets traded away, 
Perrault, maybe he gets put in the lineup, not sure, but at least I think Schlappick becomes fourth line center. We call up maybe Stenlin to play on his left wing. Andrew Shaw plays on the right wing, or even Shaw becomes 13th forward, and we call up, I don't know, Korshkov as a power forward. Somebody else. That's I don't know if we go with the grinder fourth line this season because we don't have enough grinders who are high enough in overall. Now you might be saying, how about we just go out and get some different grinders who are higher overall? Because you know, even with the plus three, a seventy-seven overall in the fourth line, I'm not uh, totally sold. It's not the end of the world, but I'm not sure if I'm totally sold. Sorting by all of the grinders in the NHL, Petrovic has the second most trade value. Uh, goes Oliver in 85, who re-signed with the Buffalo Sabres, correct? Yes, he did. Tom Wilson, Narazov, Bunneman here, 78 overall. Connor Bunneman, he has 80 discipline, so maybe we go and get Connor Bunneman. He can play with Shaw, Kamano, get 78s in there. But is it a huge difference between a 77 and a 78? 78? I don't know. Looking in free agency, speaking of RFAs, are there anyone, is there anyone still out here? Oh, absolutely. Whoa. So Taylor Radish as a power forward is still out here. Doesn't fit our lines, but 85 overall. Z uh, Zach Jones, yes, 84 overall offensive defenseman. He is still out here. Jake Gardner is just a full-on UFA, correct? Yes. Kokonen, Yane Kokonen, two-way forward. He's here. Lawson Kraus, Matsu Joseph. Interesting names. Um, what would Jones want? He wants a six-year deal. What about a one-year deal? Oh my goodness gracious. Could we go out and cheese the system to get Zach Jones for three years at one million a season as an RFA and pay like no compensation? Oh, that would be cheese nation. What kind of money does the Rangers have? Do the Rangers have? Rangers, they have no money. They have like one point. 5 million so we'd have to play it just right where we'd probably offer him like I don't know 2.5 or something there wouldn't be much compensation for a deal like that if any yeah there would be only this year's third round pick we'd have to give up if we don't have it we can go reacquire it but oof, do we go after Zach Jones we don't know his line fit Let me check here yeah we know nothing about his line fit um, so that's not ideal other guys saw a Pat Maroon 72 overall so, man, we have some questions there. What do we do with, with Jones? Do we offer him a contract? And if we do get him, where do we even play him? Who do we, we already have enough of a logjam. Where are these people going? I have no clue where they're going. I believe the captaincies will remain the same for the next season. Captain Jenner with the uh, alternates being Reinhardt and Jones. We can also start thinking about contract extensions as we move into the season after this one. Line A, Hyman, Jenner, Larson, all up for extensions. Patrick Line would be wanting 9.3 for two years years we could try to uh, that's this is gonna be a tough one here we signed him to a two three year deal because we thought that'd be most realistic and now the time has come to pay up and he's gonna want big money we we'll probably wait on him a little bit longer zach hyman if he does stay here oh that's pretty cheap actually that's pretty cheap compared to the 5.3 he's making right now boone jenner would be wanting around three well, one year five million he but Three, whoa, really weird numbers that he wants. Yeah, eight years, 6.3, yeah. Uh, Adam Larson would be wanting 5.9. So Adam Larson, probably gone after this season. I'm not paying him $6 million. Keep that in mind as well. Many things to be keeping in mind as we go along here. Corpy Salo making 1.8. He'd be wanting, okay, he could stay, what? 0.7. We could keep him as our backup even longer. Three years at 1.1, but again, we have Tarasov and, um, and Rodrigue in the system. So, man, there are a lot of questions to consider right now. Even, I'll pile on top of that even more with the head coach question. We were thinking about getting a new head coach over Prust. Now that we have all the players in their places, we could see 44, 52, 62, 66 from Haynes, the guy that we fired. Uh, Brodziak, so n probably no one that's better than Prust. I still have to sign the associate coach, though. The computer went ahead and signed uh, coaching staff for us. because I, I didn't want to sign anybody because I didn't know what the fits would be. They signed uh, J.G. Daniel's brother, Serge Daniel. Uh, I guess he's decent enough, so I'll probably just sign a different assistant coach. Uh, I'll send out the scouts as well once this episode wraps up. Last thing we got to do is look at the trade blocks around the NHL, I suppose. So much to say in this episode. I'm sorry for all the questions I'm piling up. I'll give a few days between the next episode because there's a lot of things we need to figure out for next season. What do we experiment with? Who do we put in? Who do we put down? What means what in the preseason if this person does that? 
Adam Henrique on the block in uh, Anaheim. Ekman Larson, Shore, Galchenyuk, Ryan in Arizona. Barry Sherratt, Grizzluck in Boston. Uh, no one really there in Buffalo. Calgary, no. Carolina, JT Miller. T Ooh. Miller, Teravainen, Slavin, Pesci, Shea, Savard, Murray, Nemesnikov, Johnson. Everyone, it's just a fire sale in Carolina. So... I don't know. Imagine getting like Slavin here. He is a two-way D. We have to scout some guys, maybe. So this, you could even just say scout some guys and come back, come report back. Brett Pesci could be a good defensive defenseman replacement for Adam Larson and or Dumoulin if moving into the season after this one. Blackhawks, Quinn, Eklund, some prospects there. Hollander, Othman, Barron, more prospects from the Avalanche. Red Wings have Wenberg, Ekholm, and Mott on the block. No one from the Oilers. Panthers, no one really. Kings, Kadri, Haula, uh, Parise, Brown, Hartman, Felino. Canadians, no one. Preds, uh, no one. Devils, high prospect there. Edvinson, Simon Edvinson, 10th overall pick in 2021. Don't think that makes much sense. So Dawson Mercer. New York Islanders, no. Rangers, Z we could even trade for the rights to Jones if we don't want to offer sheet him. We could just trade it for him straight up. Schmidt, Kokkonen, Heidel. Senators, Zaitsev, Nudivara, Flyers, Williams, Orpik, Penguins, Jonathan Taze, Jordan Stahl, Chris Kreider, Dmitry Orlov, Braden McNabb, lots of value for them. Carlson, Dumba, Burns, Ponick, all in the block for the Sharks. Blues, Krug, Letty, Gustafson, Sheesh. Lightning, Radish, who's an RFA, same for Joseph. Leafs, Abramov, Canucks, Yermo, more prospects. Uh, Sir Deef Savoie over on the Golden Knights. Capitals, Justin Schultz, Brendan Dillon, Connor Sheary, Zadarov, Giordano, Piri, Oshie Carter. Uh, it goes down the list. And Jets prospects. So I will stop there. That is way too much talking for today. I will show you the trade values that we have moving forward. If we don't, if we do want to trade some of these guys, what do the values look like? Foodie, really a fantastic value from Foodie. He has grown very nicely. And here's everyone else. Dahan has a lot of value. Dura post at a 75. If you have interest in the created players, just see what's up with them. As we know, Warfrajenko is playing with us. Wierenski's still in the Devils. Full trade bar of value for him. Domi, his trade value shot up with the Ducks, of course. Uh, anyone else? Ralph Recker still on the Flyers. Uh, Kravtsov looking good. Oliver still on the Sabres. Here are some other guys that we've uh, watch listed over the years. And then the goaltenders, uh, Mikey LaForge, 94 overall on the Oilers. Coconut Hobbs, 88 on the Kings. Low value, though. And Drew McIntyre, 85 on the Flames. Once again, low value. Moving into this next season, Boone Jenner is just one game away from breaking Cam Atkinson's all-time record of 735 games. He will play 736 and become the all-time leader. Not ahead of Atkinson. Oh, actually, I guess he'll tie for seasons played in 11. But points and goals still being held by Rick Nash. Assists also Rick Nash. Seth Jones, though, closing in on that. That's franchise records. If we're looking at just rookie records, Liam Foody in 2023 this past year set the new record for assists with 39. Uh, game records, none of those have been broken. And uh, season records, none of those have... Uh, Bjorkstrand, sorry, excuse me, tied Rick Nash's record with 41 goals in one season. But no one has beaten that yet. And of course, Reinhardt still holding the record for assists with 62. He did that in 2021. So that is where we will stop, my friends, heading into next episode, which will be year number four. It will most likely be a full a full year of simulation, as I don't want to break it into two parts anymore, since I want to get as much done as possible. So, you know, I, I might still stop it if it need be, but I would like to hear your predictions for the entire season, slash your advice for the whole season. What should we be thinking about at the trade block if we do need to stop? Who are we giving a 20, 30, 40 game chance? chance to who are we giving an audition to in preseason what means what if he scores more than five points if he has a negative seven send him down trade him that is where you come in as the assistant general managers i look forward to hearing all of your thoughts either down in the comments here on youtube over or over on the discord server with the link being in the description other links in the description include the twitch page where we're doing mlb the show 21 franchise mode and the twitter page as well where you'll get all of the updates that you need but after a conference finals last season and uh, winning the division in year number one, finishing second in the division in year number three. I'm looking forward to a very strong year here in Columbus. Thank you for all your help. Very much looking forward to all of your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you all in the next one.